Hi everyone, do you know these words? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. You know, when Jesus died, when he was crucified on the cross, he was basically tortured to death. And before he died, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. It means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And what did Jesus mean when he said it? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. It's going to be a very interesting one. It is also a video request. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. All right. If it's the first time that you're here, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. Feel free to join our social media pages and also subscribe here if you haven't done so already. So you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, when we read Matthew 27 verse 46, it says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, why did Jesus say this to God the Father? Did He feel abandoned, rejected by God the Father, or why? Well, let's take a look at Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Now, these words were written in Psalm hundreds of years before Jesus came to earth as a human being. And we see here why Jesus said these words to fulfill these prophecies, the prophecies about the Messiah that would come. That's what Psalm 22 is all about, about the Messiah. And so even while dying on the cross, Jesus said these words to prove yet again that He is the Messiah. This prophecy came true, just like many of the others written in Psalm 22. Let's take a look at some of them. The Psalm 22 verse 6 prophesies the following, But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Now, what you got to understand here is very interesting, that the word here, the Hebrew word used for worm, is a very specific worm in Israel. It is a worm that will first be dried out and then crushed to extract the red dye. And that's exactly what happened to Jesus, so that His blood would flow for us. The Psalm 22 verse 7 says, All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. And of course, we see this happening in Matthew 27 verse 31. And when they had mocked Him, they stripped Him of their robe and put His own clothes on Him and led Him away to crucify Him. And then Psalm 22 verse 8 prophesies the following. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. And we see this happened in Matthew 27, verse 43. Jesus' enemies said, He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. You see, it happened exactly as was prophesied. Let's look at a few more. The Psalm 22, verse 11. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. Now these bulls spoken of in Psalms are strong and fierce, just like the Romans of the day. When Jesus was there, there was no army that could defeat them. The Romans conquered, started to conquer the world, and they were fierce. They tortured people to death. Crucifixion, Jesus. They mocked Jesus and they tortured Him to death. The Psalm 22 verse 15 prophesies, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. And this is exactly how Jesus died. He was very weak. He got thirsty. He asked for water. And just after that, He died. The Psalm 22 verse 16 says, For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now you got to understand at that time it was common for the Jews to call the Gentiles, the Romans, dogs. It was used as an insult. And we can see how these Romans ridiculed Jesus and they pierced his hands and his feet. 
Jesus even later showed the marks to his disciples. Luke 24 verse 39, See my hands and my feet, that is, I myself, touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Then, Psalms 22 verse 17 says, I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. I count all my bones, meaning they're all there, they're fine, they're not broken. At the crucifixion, the Romans broke the bones of those who were crucified next to Jesus, but not His. John 19 says, So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who had been crucified with Him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that He was already dead, they did not break His legs. Now there are more, but I think you get it, you understand it. Now another possible reason of why Jesus could have said those words, apart from the, the prophecy that was fulfilled, was because Jesus received the judgment, the punishment of God the Father. The punishment and judgment that we should have received for our sin. Jesus received it in our place. Jesus the Son was crushed by God the Father for our iniquities. Isaiah 53 verse 4 says, Surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon Him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with His wounds we are healed. Now, do you remember I said in some of my previous videos that we are free from the old law of sin and death? Do you remember that? That we are now under the law of Jesus, under the law of the Holy Spirit. And that is because Jesus made us free from the old law, the curse of the law. And now Jesus became a curse for us on the cross, even though He did nothing wrong. Galatians 3 verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. God the Father approved of His Son. Jesus was righteous. He never did anything wrong. He lived righteously. He lived holy. He was the only human, 100% human and 100% God, but the only human who could do it. We can't because of our sinful nature. But God the Father approved of Jesus, His Son. He did nothing wrong, but now Jesus took our sins upon Himself. Why? So that we might be declared as righteous, so that we might be saved. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For our sake He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Now this might also be the reason why Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why? Did you forsake me? Because he felt the Father's hatred and judgment on sin. Jesus then was sin. He took all our sin, the whole world's sin on himself, and he felt it. God is light. There is no darkness in him. But Jesus received everything, all that sin. And then the Father, all his wrath went on Jesus. Imagine how Jesus felt on the cross. His Father, who loved Him since even before time began, who knows even better than we know what true love really is. For the first time, He receives His Father's wrath, judgment, punishment on sin. He carried the world's sin in that moment. But that was also the reason why He came. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world, that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, 
and people loved the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Jesus did that for you and for me. He came down to earth as a lowly human and He died for us, endured all that pain, all that suffering for us. He endured it until the righteous requirement of the law was fulfilled. Romans 8 verse 3 says, For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Jesus, the light, came into the world and He took darkness upon Himself, sin upon Himself. And it was interesting that in that hour when He was crucified, that there also came a darkness on the world, on the land. Matthew 27 verse 45, Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, when Jesus knew that the righteous requirement of the law was fulfilled, He cried out in John 19 verse 30, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Do you know what happened then? When Jesus gave up his spirit to God the Father. Matthew 27 verse 51. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after His resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Wow! How amazing it would have been to experience that. God did all of it for you because He loves you. And now the only question is, do you love God?